Hello, uh, so this is uh, CN 242 and in uh, this new chapter, uh, we are going to talk about control flow. This is a small chapter and uh, it is uh, about the order of execution in the programming language, how instructions are executed one after another. Uh, mostly we will uh, be talking about imperative languages because the control flow is much more dynamic in uh, imperative languages. Uh, they follow the uh, CPU's uh, architecture. In other languages, still we have um, exceptions, uh, like in functional language exceptions. Uh, but other than that, uh, the control flow is pretty much uh, uh, dependent on the function uh, call execution. Of course, we have other mechanisms, but uh, mostly we are going to talk about imperative languages today. So we have um, uh, a usual control flow in an imperative languages, uh, which is basically a single entrance, single exit, uh, meaning that if you have uh, some sort of an statement block, whatever it is, it can have uh, loops, nested loops, etc. So we usually have uh, at some point execution enters in this loop and it is going to leave it from the one point and this is called single entrance, single exit. Uh, whatever inside doesn't change that. Like, uh, for example, you can have an if statement here. Okay, so you have an if, so execution can flow here. There might be another if here, and execution flow will change like that. But the idea here is whatever you have, how many levels of ifs or loops, they will merge at some point and your execution will terminate there. So uh, start of your uh, block and end of your block is some sort of merged. It can be a loop as well. And in that case, for example, you will have a loop here. Uh, you will have as many iterations you like in this loop and then some test position of the loop, you terminate that. Uh, so today we are going to talk about how um, the instructions that are changing this, instead of a uh, single entry, single exit, there might be multiple positions of exit in a statement block. Uh, and also we are going to talk about uh, if multiple entry is possible, which is uh, basically a question mark here. So multiple entry is desirable or not is a question mark and we are going to talk about that. Uh, multiple entry is desirable or not. And uh, these instructions, those in instructions making it available, this multiple uh, exit uh, or multiple entrance available is called, are called uh, sequencers. Uh, so we are going to talk about sequencers. Uh, they are basically jumps, escapes, and, and at the end we are going to talk about exceptions. Uh, So first talk about jumps. Uh, basically they are uh, go-to instructions in most of the programming languages. Uh, they transfer control from its usual flow to somewhere else in the code. Usually we mark these destinations uh, with labels and those labels uh, are like your landing points. So you start from a go-to and directly jump that. Uh, in uh, the CPU architecture, uh, we have that. We have jump instructions. 
And in programming languages, we have a high order uh, versions of that as go to instructions most, mostly. And this example is a, a C example where we put uh, labels here. Okay, so we put labels and at positions of code instructions, we have jumps from there to its position here. So it will go like that. Okay, execution flow will change. So this will go this instruction, this instructions, level two, then level three, or level one back, and so on. It will go like that. Uh, this is uh, usually not desirable and uh, from the early days of your uh, computer engineering ed education, computer science education, you will learn that go to is not something desirable. Uh, sometimes they make your life easier, but we should have uh, control uh, over how much go to and when to where go to you should use. So this is basically jump like that. Uh, because of all these errors, it is called uh, spaghetti coding and uh, primary problem with spaghetti coding is your code will be unreadable. So programming is not an experience you only uh, write programs once and use it only one time, but it is just a, a shared and a timely operation so that uh, one year later, you will be reading your code. Someone else will be reading your code. They should be able to read your code. And this is the primary thing. And spaghetti coding is not readable. Uh, so the, uh, this unrestricted uh, jumps uh, will end up in uh, spaghetti coding. Uh, GCC extension makes this uh, much more uh, difficult to manage. Uh, also, it is available in Pascal, I believe, some dialects of Pascal. The labels are first order values, like they can be stored in variables, passed as a parameters and so on. Uh, that means you can declare a variable containing a label and you can change it, you can assign it, and then you can jump to that variable. So in order to understand the jump target, you have to know the content of the variable. And this will make this idea spaghetti coding unreadable code one level further. Uh, it is not much useful uh, extension, but sometimes in very uh, limited uh, amount of usage, it, it may be useful. Uh, Now I don't remember the exact syntax, but uh, syntax, but uh, you can do it. Uh, so uh, not all of the jumps are uh, bad. Some of the jumps are desirable. And uh, now let us have an exercise of which one uh, is better, which one is uh, worse. Uh, here we have uh, three jumps defined in this example you are seeing. And in uh, those examples, one of them is jumping uh, out of the loop to out of the loop. So it is from here to here. So it's a simple jump and the same level. The second one goes from out of the loop to inside of the loop. So out to in jump. So it is like a second entrance to this uh, block. And third one is from uh, within the loop to within the loop. So it is something like that. Okay. Uh, so first one outside to inside, second one inside to outside, third one inside to inside. Okay. Uh, so let us try to identify them. Sorry. Uh, so 
this one is going from here to here. And the second one is going from here to here. And the third one is going to inside to inside. Which one is good, which one is best, best, bad? So it's, it's, it's a question. So our concern is basically the variables. For example, I have a local variable here. It X. And if you remember, we have a lifetime, the concern of a lifetime and how it is, be, it is going to be initialized and so on. Second thing is about this loop condition. What is going to happen to that loop condition? So uh, considering two of them, uh, three it looks like it is quite a safe one. Because it is inside to inside. So it is, we are going to mark this as, so I have this fancy markings. So I'm going to check this because you are doing just, hello again, uh, we have just uh, a glitch in the connection. Uh, so, uh, I was saying that I am going to uh, mark this one as safe uh, because it is from inside to inside, so no one's hurt hurt because of this. We are jumping inside, so the, in terms of uh, our uh, the variable, local variable x and value of our index and termination condition, nothing wrong about it. Uh, if you look into the second one, uh, I am making a jump from inside to outside. So I am basically losing x. So x has a lifetime. The lifetime is uh, prematurely terminated. And what about termination condition? Look, just terminated and I just can live with it. Uh, the lifetime is, if it is um, a stack, uh, is stored in the stack, I, am, I need to just pop something out of the stack. So it is not as uh, easy as, the uh, number uh, three, but still I can play with it. So there is no problem. Uh, but in the first case, what I'm uh, trying to do is, I'm trying to go inside of the loop. From outside, I am going to inside of the loop. And I have, uh, of course, uh, questions uh, attached with this. What is the variable of x, value of x, and if this index is initialized to zero or not? This jump is directly inside. How I am going to initialize the loop and how I am going to uh, initialize the variable x. I'm, I need to push in a, a local variable, so I should advance the stack pointer, plus I should have this instruction executed automatically somehow. So it, this is much more, uh, problem for me. Uh, I'm going to mark that as a problem. And if you like, we can also mark that as uh, invalid. So uh, in case of C, this is uh, invalid because C has that decision. Uh, they make the solution, uh, basically, the solution is labels are local to do enclosing block. That means uh, if you have those uh, curly braces here, uh, between these curly braces here and here, the labels are accessible. So that means L2 is only accessible inside. So this 
will be invalid. L2 is not defined here. However, L1 is in the outer block, so L1 is available uh, outside or inside. So this jump and the other than two and three is uh, valid. So this is a C solution to this problem. So uh, this gives us a hint actually. Uh, unrestricted jumps are not desirable, but uh, in some cases within the block and also from uh, the block to outside world, we can have uses of uh, this multiple exits and we are going to uh, call them as escapes. Uh, and when you see them, you are going to understand them. You, you are going to understand that you know them, uh, actually. You are probably actively using them. So these are uh, restricted jumps. So they are not arbitrary restricted jumps because uh, what you uh, like to achieve through escapes is basically going out of a loop. And uh, you can have this uh, fixed position target jumps. And uh, we have, uh, if, if you are going to go out of the loop, you can use break. If you're uh, going out of multiple loops, you can use exit. This is the um, naming used by the uh, book. Uh, so exit is something else. In real life, the exit is something like, uh, else. Uh, we use exit sequencer. And if it is a function, the block is function, we use return sequencer. And if uh, the whole program is to be terminated, we use halt sequencer. In real life, uh, programming languages use exit to name halt sequencer. So the break sequencer is in C, just when you use break, the innermost loop block is terminated. So basically it is for uh, premature termination of a loop. Uh, and they, they, it is quite useful, for example, if you have an error, you may like to do that. Or if you are searching some value in a loop and you have found it, you don't need to wait until the termination of the loop, uh, and so on. So it is, uh, you can have such uh, uses. You use break, and basically it will only terminate the innermost loop. Uh, in C, C++, we also have a continue uh, instruction, which is basically a skip. It will skip the remaining uh, instructions uh, and skip to the next iteration. Uh, and the next one is the exit sequencer in Ada. We have that in a couple of other languages, uh, uh, like Java has them, Perl has them. Uh, Python people uh, are talking about them, them but not uh, included that. The idea is uh, we can mark, for example, you can have three levels of nesting. In this example, we have two levels of nesting. You can name uh, where you like to uh, jump. So here, for example, I am going to terminate the second loop, not the inner loop, but second loop. Uh, or I'm going to continue to the second loop. You can do that in uh, Java. And uh, the return is basically you, have, you are using that. When you use return, the function is terminated, uh, not waiting until uh, the last instruction and terminated. A hot sequencer terminates the program completely. So basically it is uh, terminating the program and terminating the process. Uh, now, let us uh, talk more about the functions. Again, I have two uh, jumps in some hypothetical programming language. One jump is going from here to here. And the second one is going from here to here. 
So uh, when you have called F, F is executing and it likes to go to main back in the first case. In the second case, uh, in the main, F has finished already. You like to go back to F. Again, uh, I have the same question. Which one is better? Which one is worse? Just see at the end of it, I am giving you some time. So uh, you should discuss this uh, with the uh, activation records uh, in your mind. So uh, when you go inside of a function, you need to create the activation records. When you are going outside of the function, going out of the function, you have to uh, destroy it. And some, usually destroying is easier than uh, constructing it. Uh, the uh, jump instruction uh, will modify your instruction pointer. Uh, that means next instruction to execute. However, stack is not touched. So uh, when you have a function, you have activation records and you have a, a runtime stack uh, affected as a result of your function. Because when you jump inside of a function and when you return back, you will return somewhere else if you don't have the activation record. Uh, this type of uh, jumps are called non-local jumps. So, uh, for example, uh, out of a function is uh, simply having this. So you are in this activation record, and you, sh you like to roll back to activation record of G or main, whatever you like. Uh, this rollback requires only um, restoration of restoration of the uh, runtime stack meaning if you can uh, preserve your stack pointer somewhere, you can roll back to that stack pointer. So you have, instead of a, a single uh, instruction, updating instruction pointer, you have to updating instruction pointer to the new jump location, plus modifying stack pointer to previously uh, uh, saved position. So there are two of them, two instructions. But in case of, the reverse from uh, outside to inside, you do this. You just jump to new instruction plus you advance stake pointer by some amount. Which amount? What are the parameters? Okay. What are the variables, uh, initial values? And do you know the variables at all? So this jump should know about the target function, its activation records, its uh, parameters, and local variable size, and so on. And even though it knows the local variable size, parameter size, what are the initial values of parameters? So this is completely uh, strange and uh, untrackable uh, jump. So between those two non-local jumps, uh, we have to pick this one over this one. The left hand side is still desirable and we are going to call them exceptions uh, because we may need them. I'm going to show you the example. But the other one doesn't make sense and it doesn't give you anything. Uh, except the uh, concurrency and coroutines. At the end, I have a slide for that. And this controlled uh, jumps uh, out of multiple, singular multiple levels of function calls are called exceptions. Uh, usually we have a handler and catch point and they go out of there. Uh, in C, we don't have them, but uh, we have set jump and long jump for having uh, non-local jumps. Uh, we don't have the exceptions, but we have non-local jumps through this library calls, set jump and long jump. What they do is set jump will um, store your current 
uh, runtime stack pos position your context and long jump will uh, be passed to that context value as a result long jump will jump to that or restore that uh, previously stored context in C++ we have try catch in sorry about okay uh, the um, in uh, Python we have try accept and we have many uh, contemporary language providing this interface. Uh, basically, uh, each try block will uh, preserve this uh, current context so that inside of that, uh, any instruction or functions uh, in a try block, we can have many levels of nesting. Any of them uh, raises an exception or throws an exception it might be catched by this one, by this direct non-local jump. Uh, and we can have arbitrary nesting. So let's see how this is useful. Uh, this is just an example. Uh, error handling in a conventional C code. Uh, the, uh, assume main is calling open parse and open parse is calling search for a file and uh, open it and search for a file will look if file exists on file system and then if it cannot find what it's going to do it is going to go uh, return a value and that value is used here and it's going to return that value and the main is going to process that this is conventional error handling in C code, and you can have nesting levels of 5, 10. It can be much more large. So this is actually tedious and you make your uh, code harder to read. And you have to keep track of all these uh, error codes, minuses, etc. This one means that, this one means that, and so on. Uh, the problem here is error will happen here. However, Handler, the actual response position of you uh, is main. So basically, we have a propagation of error values for some uh, handling in the outermost uh, function. The uh, exceptions uh, make your life easier in this sense. Uh, you define a try block here where you handle the errors. And then open parse call search open search open couldn't find the file just throw some permissions or the permissions is not uh, granted so the execution will jump directly into this position and this is the beauty of that um, you can make use of exceptions in that case in that sense and most of the uh, libraries uh, who didn't give the internals to you can uh, raise exceptions and you can write handlers to those libraries and so we have uh, such advantages of using exceptions uh, so the idea here is uh, the exceptions and handlers has to match so basically programming languages provide that facility uh, there is not only one kind of exception. We have uh, versions of exceptions. And uh, by using values or data types, we can have multiple handlers. So you can, this type of exception handled, handled here, those type of exception is handled here. So you can have uh, that uh, type of examples uh, also possible. So in C, uh, the uh, handler matching is based on data type. Uh, so the thrown value uh, doesn't have uh, much importance, so we don't have value match, but we have type match. The reason is uh, if you make it a value-based match, you have to do it at runtime. So you need to have some runtime check. 
However, if you uh, make it type-based, uh, you can do some of the tasks, not all of them, but some of the tasks at compiler. Uh, at least you uh, eliminate some of the possibilities. So here in this example, main is calling f. f creates another try block. So this is um, try block inside try block. It calls g. And g uh, throws, if it throws four, four is an integer. And the rule is simply the closest try block that handles this data type. So if integer is handled by the closest type block, it is going to jump to this position. So basically it's going to hit here. We could have integer handler in main as well, but it, it is not going to be matched because the closest one is uh, this try block with f. When it uh, throws floating point value here, the double value, there is no handler in the closest block. So it is going to directly match to the main. So th th this is uh, basically, uh, the, basic, uh, the principle is basically the, uh, the closest try block that introduced a handler of the same type, okay? If there is no handler, uh, it is going to be a runtime error. And uh, you can observe that in, uh, for example, Java and so on. Uh, Java pushed this idea uh, one level, uh, level fur further. For each uh, function, you also declare which uh, exceptions can be generated by a, uh, a function. So, uh, at some position here, for example, after G here, you say that uh, raises integers. So then define your function. So you define your data type here. Your function G raises integer. So you have to declare it if you are raising an uh, integer. Uh, this idea is actually uh, make programmer aware of what it is doing, what he is or she is doing. Uh, if he can uh, handling all of the exceptions properly or not. So it will reduce the possibility of your code raising a runtime error because programmer has to uh, be aware of what he or she is doing. I can have, I can show you one example uh, too. I will not go much, spend time on that, but I'm going to give you that and you can play with the example on your own. Uh, this is a C example. Uh, and it is quite a comprehensive example of possibilities. I define an exception data type here, uh, which has a message and so on, so you don't have to understand the details. And I uh, derived uh, the uh, overflow, underflow, not old, not prime as uh, subclasses of this exception class. And I have uh, quite different ways of uh, creating exceptions. So basically what happens is I have this try it call. And the try it call, I expect some, uh, some number from the user. User enters that and I provide it here to try it. Uh, try it, try to return, uh, return uh, is prime test fx. Uh, and handles overflow and underflow. Uh, it handles those two classes, overflow and underflow. Test F will see if the function is, uh, it's going to evaluate the function and return it. 
uh, and that is going to be tested against its prime. Uh, if it is not odd, there is a handler here. If it is not prime, exception is raised, there is a handler here. And this is my F. If it is too large, it's going to raise overflow. If it is less than zero, underflow. If it is even, it is going to raise not odd. If X is uh, prime, it is going to return a value, X times X plus X plus one. And otherwise, it's going to raise not prime. And this is simple prime test function. So if you uh, try this, uh, with different values, you will end up in different egg handlers, exceptions, uh, okay, uh, now, here, uh, if I run that, let us enter an integer, for example, minus 10, result is, should be positive, so that means, uh, the F raised underflow. Underflow is not handled by test F. Uh, it is handled by this one, the trite. If you enter 1010, ah, sorry, I have to try it again. Should be less than. 1000, same thing, the overflow hit here, raised in the F function, two levels, nested position. Uh, and uh, the next try is providing a value which is six. Six is going to uh, get uh, not odd, not odd will be handled by the closed one, not tested, but tested. And it has uh, no error reporting only, but it tries x plus one. So it is going to try seven. Uh, so uh, if it tries uh, seven, it is going to get here. Uh, seven is prime and it is going to return some uh, seven times seven plus seven plus one and it is going to get here it is going to return if this number is prime or not and apparently it is not prime okay seven times seven plus seven plus one is not prime uh, if you directly specify a prime number like 13 result is zero no there is no exception but if you have a value satisfying, for example, 17 is satisfying that 17 times 17 plus 17 plus one is also prime, you have that. Okay, so this is how it is handled. As you can see, we have handlers and based on data type, we handle the raised exception or not. Also throwing again is possible. Uh, the next example is the fancy one, just for fun, uh, I have uh, written this. Uh, so it is a factorial function returning no value. You can make this void as well. So. Uh, now I have a factorial function which doesn't uh, return the value, but it throws it. If n is less than or equal to one, it throws one. Otherwise, it will call factorial n minus one uh, and handles the integer value raised by inner factorial and throw the uh, thrown value times n, okay? So now it is like raising exceptions uh, in a nested manner. So it raises n times v, n times v, n times v, it goes like that. And at the end, it catches the last thrown value and it will be your factorial. Okay, so if you specify 10 here, 
you will get the result. A factorial example without return. Only I propagate that with catch and throw, catch and throw. Let's call it like that. So as I said, it is just for fun. Uh, and it also shows uh, retrow is possible. So this is the exception, which is the uh, very useful uh, uh, mechanism for handling errors in a programming language. As the last discussion, which is an advanced topic, so this is not in the scope of our course, what else we have? What else, what other types of uh, non-local jumps uh, in the programming languages? Uh, in the sequential flow, we have this local jumps, subroutine calls, and exceptions. So we will have this single entry, uh, single exit, or sometimes single entry, multiple exits to, due to this exceptions and escapes and so on. Uh, however, your programming language may have also concurrent flow. In that case, you will have multiple contexts. So that means at the same time, there will be two or three or more contexts are active. Uh, this is quite uh, typical in a multi-thread scenario, a concurrent uh, parallel program scenario. Uh, also, we have uh, event-based programming in uh, callback-based uh, programming, and sometimes just uh, in order to implement iterators, we use generators and so on. This type of different vari variations uh, exist. So if you are more interested, please uh, refer to those terms uh, I just listed here. Callbacks, programming with callbacks, which is quite uh, uh, popular, also necessary in JavaScript web-based programming. Uh, generators for uh, implementing iterators uh, in an easier way. Uh, not thread programming. Fibers are just lightweight threads. Uh, similarly, we will have a think await uh, solution to this callback based uh, programming, event based programming, uh, and so on. So, if you are interested, you can read more about this uh, terms. So, the idea here uh, is basically having multiple contexts active at a time. So, uh, we jump from this one to this one execute for a while, then jump to this one, and jump to this one. Assume this is your actual program, executing here. During that, you have a mouse event occurred. User press the button, so you will have a new uh, event handler will be activated. It is going to execute for a while, and then your code will be turned back. Then, when your uh, code is sleeping, uh, garbage collector will be active. It will work for a while and it will go back to your uh, or mouse event or go back to your uh, program. And this is typical in, in contemporary architectures with this asynchronous events like web downloads, uh, garbage collectors, uh, user events, and so on. Uh, so I believe this is the end of my presentation for today. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, you can ask more questions about uh, our uh, forms. Uh, by the way, there is no question in the forms. Uh, should I expect everyone is understanding everything correctly or not? But please ask questions. It will be better if it is interactive. Thank you very much.